He's only 17, but Michael Lunn is already an arachnologist in the making. Branches, which the females will really love this stuff. We're in his backyard in the northern suburbs of Perth, looking for the species that he's really passionate about. What are they called again, Michael? Peacock jumping spiders. Now, they're really colourful and quite active, yeah? Oh, yeah, they are. The colours, like, they're such bright, vivid colours that you wouldn't normally see in nature. Um, but other stuff, like the dancing and the vibrations and all that stuff is so, so unique just to peacock spiders. My fascination started right at the start of the COVID lockdown. I was sort of wandering around the backyard, just seeing what I could find, you know, having a, a little poke around the garden. And uh, it was that spot right there, that little piece of fence. It felt like just a beam of sun just hit that panel of fence and I just saw it right there. And from that moment onwards, it's, I've just been hooked. I found these videos that my friend made basically a tutorial list on how to look for peacock spiders properly and I watched those videos and uh, I started visiting some spots and using the tools that he taught me to to look for these spiders and uh, yeah I just I started photographing them and then I met Flynn. Flynn is the guy that first introduced me to macro photography and has helped teach me a lot of, about what I know. I told Flynn about the pet tarantulas I have and Flynn wanted to come around and get some nice close-up photos of them. I thought it'd be some really big high-tech expensive thing and he just showed me this this sort of small cheap camera setup that made these beautiful images and I thought I could do that. I, I haven't looked back since I just started shooting. I thought you know, this is this is a perfect opportunity for me to start uh, a public Instagram page and to be able to share my photos and these spiders with the rest of the world. So how else are you sharing your love for these spiders? I've been letting a lot of people tag along on my trips and I've been able to show them you know, where all the spiders are and teach them a lot about the spiders uh, and even how to photograph them. Well, that just leaves me with one last question. And I'm dying to ask you this. Can we get out there and find some? Yes, we can. Let's go. <laughs> OK. A lot of piles of dead twigs, so the females generally gravitate to them. You know what I really love is... We're in a patch of bushland not far from Michael's place. And, look, I appreciate how colourful peacock jumping spiders are, particularly when you look at them in Michael's pictures and videos. But seriously, in a bushland setting like this, I don't know how he sees them. He reckons they're about the size of a grain of rice. Work it out. Oh, Costa, I found one. Costa. Yeah. All right, I'm coming over. Sure enough, Michael, with his bionic vision, spots yeah. one. You see he's on that leaf right there? Seriously, how did you see him cold like that? When I first started out looking for peacock spiders, I watched a bunch of training videos that taught me to look for ants and practice on ants. So that's what I did for a while. And also, I think having young eyes definitely helps too. So I'm capitalising on my youth while I have it. Um, probably my best spot was I spotted one out of a moving car. Oh, on the edge of a, on the edge of a road, it was just perched on a leaf, kind of like this one is right here. So, <laughs> What sort of equipment and techniques do you use to capture those images that you share? Well, here I got my camera set up. This is what I use. I have a 60 millimeter macro lens, f2.8. It's a specialist macro lens, so it helps me get in there. Here I have this magnifier. So you clip that onto the front of your lens and that allows you to get even closer and it also increases the sharpness of your image too. Some people like to shoot in natural light, but I prefer to use a, a flash and this custom-made diffuser you just put over your flash. If you look at the inside of the diffuser, it's got this beautiful white reflective material here that carries the light with it 
and just pastes it evenly across the front of it. There's only two real techniques to macro and that's your st single shot and your stack. Um, and your single shot is by far the more easier one and I think that's the one that people looking into macro should start with. When you take a photo it's just a it's sort of a flat image but a stack is really unique because your camera will take a series of shots and your camera will change the focal depth at each shot. Say I start the stack right at the front of the spider so the series of images captures the whole spider in focus. And when you do that, you can uh, fiddle with your settings to allow your images to even be sharper and sharper and sharper because you're shooting at a much narrower f-stop. So you're getting less of the spider in focus, but the little part you have in focus is really sharp. So you stack through the whole spider and then you go home and you open up uh, an editing software and those softwares will detect which areas of your image are in focus and it will stitch them all together to make one big image with everything perfectly in focus. When I first got into peacock spiders, I was just interested in finding them. And I sort of fell in love with them so much that I'm now I'm advocating for them because there's species like Muratus yanship who are under threat from housing developments. We're trying to work towards getting Muratus yanship listed on an endangered species list to try and stop their habitat being cleared. Muratus yanship is such a new species. It's hard to get enough survey data to prove that they only exist in that one area. So at the moment, our focus is really to search the other areas and collect as much survey data as we can to help the people writing up this report that we're going to hopefully present soon in the next year or two to be able to try and get this spider species listed. It's cool being a photographer, but it would really suck to just to just have my photos as historical records for someone to look back on and and see this beautiful spider species that once occurred. Uh, I want the spiders to be here for generations to come. Is it true that you've covered all bases when it comes to peacock spider species? Maybe not some of the eastern states ones. I'm not as familiar with those ones, but the WA ones, I can identify every single one. I can sort of point out anything new or anything weird that I haven't seen before. Last year on my trip down south with uh, my friends, we all searched this little clearing and I found this little pile of twigs right in the middle of the clearing. And I saw a little jump and I completely lost my mind because I had never seen anything like that one before. I would spent a, quite a fair amount of time searching for a new species, like that's top of the list. So to be able to tick that off was was quite uh, an incredible, incredible achievement. So yeah, it's, you've identified a spe new species. Well, it's soon to be new species. So the actual paper for it is most likely going to get written uh, next year. It's got this sort of metallic pink patch in the middle of its abdomen that you don't really see in any other Murata species. It's quite a look at that one. Me and Flynn have been lucky enough to be included in this. A research project that Cambridge University is conducting. They're essentially comparing the DNA of all these peacock spiders to sort of find out who's closely related to who, because it helps give us more of a guideline to understand the spiders better and their lineage better too. So it's photography and videography now. What are you looking at down the road? A science degree or? Yeah, yeah, I think that would be absolutely amazing to get a proper science degree and be able to do it full time. I hope you've been able to appreciate through our lens just what a remarkable individual Michael is. At his age, to have such a singular focus on one family of spiders. Just imagine his contribution to conservation over a lifetime. It makes my heart sing.